Hey there, how are you doing? Rodrigo here for Textualize and in this ninth video in our series of building a stopwatch application with Textual we are going to finally wire the start and stop buttons to make sure that they alternate so that when the stopwatch is like this and you press start the start button goes away and the stop button shows and vice versa when the stop button is shown you can press stop to hide the stop button and show the start button so this is going to be achieved by combining the two things I taught you in the last video, which are the knowledge of CSS classes and knowledge about, um, what do you call it, nested selectors. And we're also going to use something new. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a CSS class to keep track of what button is being shown. Because we are going to, the thing we're going to do is we're going to use a CSS class to tag all stopwatches that have been started. All right, so that's what we're going to do. For example, let's pretend that the first stopwatch starts out as, or its initial state is already started. So this is going to tell me this CSS class is what I can use to know which stopwatches are running and which ones are not. So that's the idea. And therefore, if I have a stopwatch that has been started, then what I can do is I can look for stopwatches that have been started with a selector and say that within those, the start button should have display none. And similarly, if I have a stopwatch that has been started, within that stopwatch, the stop button should be shown. And that's display block. And we need this to overwrite this one here. So this rule is more specific than this one, and therefore this rule will take precedence when there's a clashing thing. So because there's two definitions of display, because it's being defined twice, the one that applies is the one that's more specific. And it's in this case it's this one, in the case of our of this CSS file. So if I stop this and run it again. You can see that the first timer here, it doesn't show the start button and it shows the stop button because I tagged it with the started class. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to tag and untag each row depending on whether I click the buttons or not. And to do that we need to introduce the concept of messages in Textual. Now a message, a Textual message, is like a notification that Textual sends so that you know that something happened and in particular when a button is pressed you get a notification called button.pressed and so what you need to do is you need to handle that notification so you're going to write something you're going to write some code that changes the start of class whenever you get the button.pressed notification so let's see how that can be done all right let me show you how that can be done. So what you're going to do is at the top you're going to write from textual import on and this on right here this is a decorator that you're going to use to specify which methods run when certain messages show up so when you're notified of certain things. Now you're going to go inside the stopwatch because that's what the stopwatch is what we want to modify whenever the start and the stop buttons are pressed and so you're going to write something like this you're going to write at on and then inside the parentheses you type button.pressed and in here you're going to write a method so this is going to be a method that's going to do something so these three lines what this says is this method right here is going to be called whenever a button is pressed because that's what's written here button.pressed so for example, I can go ahead and I can type self.exit. Now, if I rerun my application, whenever I press a button, the application goes away. Actually, I'm getting an error because I'm self here is the stopwatch. So I actually need to access the app of the stopwatch. So that should, sorry, that should exit the application. All right, so let me rerun this. So pressing a button, any button exits the application. Again, that's because whenever you press a button, Textual posts a message, so that, that's the Textual term for it. Textual posts a message called button.pressed and 
through the on decorator you can say that you want to run this method whenever this message is posted now we don't want to exit the app we want to do something more specific when the start button is pressed we want to say that the stopwatch now has the css class started and when the stop button is pressed we want to say that the stopwatch no longer has the CSS class called started. So how do we do that? Well, we've seen that this here, this here captures all button presses. So we need to be more specific. Next to the button dot pressed, we're going to say that we want to handle button presses from start buttons. So this is a selector that's going to further specify which buttons I want to handle. And in here, I'm going to call it something like start stopwatch just to have a better name and now i need to say that the stopwatch has been started and the way you do it is you type self add class so this lets you add css classes to a widget and in here you just type the name of the class so i'm saving and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to press stop and nothing happens reset nothing happens and start and notice that the start button is replaced by the stop button. Now it's actually probably beneficial if I show you what happens if I remove the start from here. So this is just on button pressed. Now pressing stop apparently does nothing, but pressing reset now also starts the stopwatch because again I'm handling any button press, but that's not what I want. I only want to handle the start button press. That's when I start the stopwatch so that's going to be start and we're going to do a very similar thing but to stop the stopwatch so at on button press so whenever a button is pressed actually whenever a stop button is pressed we want to stop sorry stop the stopwatch and we do that by using the method remove class and we remove the class started so now, if I save and if I run my app, I can start and stop my stopwatches. Actually, only kind of, because the time is not ticking, but we're starting to see how things happen, right? So in here, I'm already handling these messages, these button pressed messages, and I already have a way of saying, well, at this point, the stopwatch is supposed to start, and at this point the stopwatch is supposed to stop so now we're getting ready to tick the time so let's call it a not call it a day but let's call it a video and in the next video i'm going to show you how to update the time when you start and stop the stopwatch so i hope this made sense and i'll see you soon bye